Cody Rhodes ready for a WWE return, best and worst of Raw before Survivor Series. Roman Reigns claims he was pushed to the edge by Jey Uso. WWE does impressive ticket sales for this week's Raw. Bray Wyatt called a trash bag human. Roman Reigns gets honest about his current WWE run. Let's jump right into it. Best and Worst of Raw Before Survivor Series Welcome to the Best and Worst of Raw Before Survivor Series War Games. It was perhaps one of the weakest, if not the weakest, episodes of the Triple H era. As a result, this will be the first edition in a long time to feature more worsts than bests. With that said, there were still some high points as well, which should be considered when getting excited about Survivor Series. As far as a go-home show goes, it wasn't necessarily the best, but it wasn't the worst. Here are the ups and downs of Raw this week, number 2. Best, Austin Theory is the star of the US title feud. Although we wish that WWE had begun the build-up to the United States Championship triple threat match a few weeks ago, they have nailed it so far. For one, Mustafa Ali has been unceremoniously dumped out of the feud despite being teased as Roland's US title opponent throughout October. Austin Theory has had a resurgence of late, and everything he has touched has turned to gold. He has been the undisputed star of this short-lived feud between him, Seth Rollins, and Bobby Lashley. We're looking forward to seeing what Triple H has planned for the 25-year-old. Rumors suggested that the game has big plans for Theory, and we are now seeing that come to fruition on Raw. Number 3. Worst, a random WrestleMania 38 rematch that nobody asked for. With little context, Drew McIntyre approached JBL and Baron Corbin while they were playing cards, and he set up a WrestleMania 38 rematch. While the WrestleMania match made sense, and provided an incredible moment of McIntyre kicking out of end of days, this match didn't make sense. It wasn't even a great match to begin with. However, when Akira Tozawa came out and had an intimate moment with JBL was a highlight, so it wasn't all bad. Number 2. Worst, Johnny Enhancement Johnny Gargano was supposed to witness the match between The Miz and Dexter Loomis. The Alister had stated that he wasn't medically cleared after injuring himself doing a TikTok. As stupid as that sounds, it only got worse when he sent Omos to squash Gargano. This was the worst moment for the latter since debuting on Monday Night Raw. While we agree with the decision to have Omos win, it was just a bad look for the NXT Triple Crown Champion. Number 1. Best, a solid main event on Raw. The main event saw a rematch between two former Raw women's champions, Asuka and Rhea Ripley. However, the stakes were high as the winner's team would get the advantage at War Games. Given how WWE is building up Rhea Ripley as the next big star of the women's division, it shouldn't be surprising that she defeated Asuka in a good WrestleMania rematch. Team Damage Control now has the advantage at War Games, while Team Bianca Belair doesn't even have a fifth member. Speaking of which, number 1. Worst, no reveal after the main event. It was a bit unfortunate that we didn't get to find out who the fifth member of Team Belair was by the end of Raw. It was the perfect setup, but we can only imagine it was done that way for a reason. If Candice LeRae was the final member, she would likely have been announced by now. But having stars like LeRae or Chelsea Green would be shooting themselves in the foot as the wider main roster audience has no clue who they are. It has to be Becky Lynch, but the lack of reveal made Raw end on a sour note. WWE does impressive ticket sales for this week's Raw. WWE reportedly did impressive numbers with their ticket sales for this week's episode of Monday Night Raw. This week's edition of the Red Brand will emanate live tonight from the MVP Arena in Albany, NY. It was the go-home episode of the show for Survivor Series, War Games, which is scheduled for this Saturday, November 26th. WrestleTix has reported that the company has sold 3,997 tickets for tonight's show, leaving only 808 unsold. It should be noted that the small number of tickets left unsold should be easily taken care of by walk-up sales, especially in a market like New York State. The only match that was announced for Monday night is a singles bout between Asuka and Rhea Ripley, with the winner providing an advantage to their team at the War Games match this weekend. With Ripley appearing on TV on a weekly basis, it would be surprising for some to know that she has not wrestled on Raw in over five months. The last match she wrestled on the weekly show was on the June 6th episode, where she won a fatal four-way match against Alexa Bliss, Dowdrop, and Liv Morgan to determine the number one contender for Bianca Belair's Raw Women's Championship. The Nightmare suffered a tooth, brain injury during that match and was out of the squared circle for over four months. This weekend's Survivor Series Premium Live event will feature War Games matches on the main roster for the first time in WWE history, with both brands being showcased in one match each. While SmackDown's War Games match will see the Bloodline take on Sheamus, Butch, Ridge Holland, Drew McIntyre, and Kevin Owens, the Raw match will be an all-women's affair. To get on the same page here, the War Games match sees two adjacent rings covered by a cage-like structure. Both teams have one member each battling out in the ring. After a few minutes, the team with the advantage sends another member to the match. When all the contestants are in the ring, it becomes a one-fall match between the two teams. The heel team sees Damage Control team up with Nikki Cross and Rhea Ripley. The babyface team consists of Raw Women's Champion Bianca Belair, Asuka, Alexa Bliss, and Miyim. Their final teammate will be revealed this Saturday. Bray Wyatt called a trash bag human. 
WWE superstar Len Knight had some harsh words for Bray Wyatt at a recent live event in Allentown, Pennsylvania. The two men have been at odds since the former Universal Champion interrupted Knight during his backstage interview two weeks back on SmackDown. The duo had a brief exchange of words which ended with Wyatt headbutting the 40-year-old. Bray called out the former Max Dupree on the blue brand to apologize for his actions. However, Knight ended up slapping the Eater of the Worlds twice across his face, which left the latter irate. La Knight addressed the incident before his match against Ricochet at this week's Saturday Night Main Event. The 40-year-old called Wyatt a trash bag human and stated that the latter is afraid to come face to face with him. I could have sworn I just heard everyone in this building going, talk to us. So this one time I am going to give you what you're asking for. Let me talk to you. I guess we have some Bray Wyatt fans here tonight. That's what I was expecting, a bunch of trash. That's what I expected, because that trash bag human, he ain't here tonight. You know why that is. Because I am here, and he's scared to show up and look into these eyes again. You saw the slaps. Not slap, slaps, count them, one, two, right across his meaty face. Len Knight's actions on WWE SmackDown ended up costing him big time as the former NXT star was found unconscious backstage with a bunch of stage equipment stacked on top of it. While it is still unclear who attacked the 40-year-old, one can expect Bray Wyatt to have played a role in it. The Eater of the World was agitated after getting slapped twice and had a cold look in his eyes during the segment. The mysterious Uncle Howdy was also spotted in the background during Knight's backstage interview. It will be interesting to see how Knight responds to the attack on the upcoming edition of SmackDown. The 40-year-old star has proven that he is not intimidated by Wyatt and is willing to go the distance with the former WWE Champion. What do you think is next for Len Knight on SmackDown? Sound off below and let us know. Roman Reigns gets honest about his current WWE run. WWE superstar Roman Reigns opened up about his current run in the company. Reigns has been at the top of the WWE food chain since returning to the company as tribal chief at SummerSlam 2020. He has not been pinned in over 1,000 days and is currently on the longest title reign of the current generation. However, during an interview with The Ringer, the head of the table disclosed that he's just getting started and has a lot of ammo left in his arsenal. People want these interviews, they want to do these documentaries. But this is the bottom of the third inning to me. Down the road, 20 years from now when we start giving out all these crazy details of the inside. Inside, there's just going to be even deeper respect for the performances that we've been putting on. Man, it's been a hell of a journey. But it's only begun. It's going to get bigger. Led by Roman Reigns, the Bloodline is one of the most dominant factions in WWE history, and the group has been unstoppable since its formation. Every member of the faction, bar Sami Zayn and Solo Sokoa, is walking around with gold around their waist. Reigns has taken down a lot of top stars on his way to the top, which makes him a marked man in WWE. The Tribal Chief's past came to haunt him on the last two editions of SmackDown. Drew McIntyre and Kevin Owens joined forces with the Brawling Brutes to take down Reigns and his faction. The Bloodline will face their biggest challenge yet at Survivor Series. They will take on the Brawling Brutes, Drew McIntyre, and Kevin Owens in a 5 on 5 match inside War Games. It'll be interesting to see what trick the Tribal Chief has up his sleeve for the match inside the ominous structure. Reigns Weissman, Paul Heyman, has experience with War Games as he was the manager of the faction Dangerous Alliance, which participated in a similar match back in 1992. Roman Reigns claims he was pushed to the edge by Jey Uso. Roman Reigns recently stated that nobody has ever pushed him emotionally as much as his bloodline stablemate Jey Uso during their feud in late 2020. Though they are currently as close as ever, just over two years back, the tribal chief was involved in a heated feud with Jey. The duo had a pair of instant classics at Clash of the Champions in Hell in a Cell 2020, which Reigns won. Following this feud's culmination, the Usos and Reigns reconciled and formed the Bloodline, arguably the most dominant stable in all of wrestling today. The Ringer recently published a long-form article about Roman Reigns' stunning transformation into his current tribal chief avatar. It included several comments from Reigns, who spoke about various topics, including his feud with Jey Uso. Reigns revealed that since he and Jey already had a close-knit relationship, they were comfortable talking about their shared history as part of the rivalry. I'm not going to dive into all the super backstage stuff, but there was no time to discuss, Reigns says. So there were a lot of instincts that were relied on. The fact that we have literally a brother-level connection and relationship, it made it really easy for us to just rely on our history and being comfortable with each other and also being able to push that type of emotion out of each other. Roman Reigns firmly believes nobody has ever pushed him as much as Jey Uso did during the feud and that it made a star out of a tag team veteran. I don't think anyone's ever pushed me emotionally like Jey has, Reigns admits, and I think we did that for each other and we made a star out of him. Since aligning with Reigns, Jey and Jimmy Uso have achieved immense success, as they recently became the longest reigning tag team champs in WWE history. Over the last few weeks, a few cracks have begun in the bloodline as the Stable's honorary use, Sami Zayn, and Jey Uso don't get along well. However, the group will have to keep their internal issues aside for Survivor Series 2022, where they will go to war against the Brawling Brutes, Drew McIntyre, and Kevin Owens in a War Games match. 
the bout promises to be a thrilling and violent affair whose outcome could set the course for things to come in the future. If the bloodline ends up on the losing side, fans can expect things between its members to come to a boil. Whatever the case, it's safe to say that the saga surrounding Roman Reigns and his stablemates has the viewers riveted. What's your favorite feud of the Tribal Chief since he became the Universal Champion? Sound off in the comments section below. Cody Rhodes ready for a WWE return Cody Rhodes has been absent from WWE programming for a long time. His wife, Brandi Rhodes, recently provided an update on the American Nightmare's potential return timeline. The former AEW star was last seen inside the squared circle at WWE Hell in a Cell earlier this year. With a visibly gruesome injury, Cody Rhodes emerged victorious against Seth Rollins yet again. However, on the following episode of WWE Raw, he was taken out by the Visionary, which was the kayfabe reason to give him time off for recovery. During a promotional interview on Steve Fall's 10 Count, Randy Rhodes provided the following update on his rehabilitation timeline, he needs to wrestle. It's in his blood. It's part of his makeup. But now, he's been great through all of this. All of the work that he's been doing to get back has been really good. I went with him to his physical therapist yesterday to finally see because he's been ragging on me the entire time. You haven't come, you haven't come, you have to come. She continued. So I'm like, okay, I'm coming to see. I was really just impressed with how he looks now. It doesn't look like anything happened which is crazy because he had major surgery. So he looks like the same Cody to me. The muscle mass is all there, you know, he looks ready to me, but I'm not a doctor. Ties in Royal Rumble matches are a rarity. The last time we saw one was in 1994 when Bret Hart and Lex Luger ended up falling at the same time. Vince Russo believes a returning CM Punk and Cody Rhodes could have that sort of a finish in 2023. We go to the match at the Royal Rumble. They do the double over the top elimination where it's a flat tie. We look at every angle. So they decide it's going to be a little different this year based on what happened, and the number one contender is going to be decided. And then Reigns cuts the promo. You've hit the rock's music, and now you've got the best of both worlds, said Russo. While it may sound interesting, the likelihood of that happening is very minute. However, Cody winning the Royal Rumble to challenge for the undisputed WWE Universal title at WrestleMania sounds very plausible. Creeping up from the heathens Got will, got fight, got pride, got reason If they wanna go eat, then you know I'm gon' feed them If you're coming for me, hope you're ready for a demon I got eyes in the back of my head, I'm seeing Take me for 